In this video, I'm going to explain to you how to make a career change by making a transition within your existing organization that you work for. I'm going to give you one reason to help you realize when this is the right time or the right thing to do. And I'm going to tell you about the three essential steps you need to take to ensure that you can make this change and make it work. Right, so if you are thinking about making a change within your organization uh, in terms of working in another department or going in a different direction within the organization, um, this can be good for a few reasons. Uh, change for the sake of change isn't a good idea, but if the change is deliberate and conscientious because it supports your career objectives, what you're trying to achieve in your career, then this is a good idea. So if, you, if this is what's on your mind at the moment, I'd like to tell you a story about how I managed to make a change within one of the organizations that I was working for. Early on in my career, I experienced a bit of a career crisis where my career objectives are not being met. I decided that I wanted to be more of a generalist with the idea of getting into senior management. I didn't want to be a specialist, so my plan was to climb the corporate ladder for about the first two-thirds of my career and then just spend the latter third of my career in the, um, in the boardroom, in the senior management level. My expectations were that I was going to do quite, quite well. I wanted to get myself into a boardroom because one of my strengths I always felt is that I had a very strong leadership angle and that I felt that I could bring that to a, an executive decision-making type of environment. But Early on in my career, I found myself in a situation where I was a design engineer at a, um, a large um, company in the oil and gas industry. I was told that I was doing a good job and that I was about to be promoted, but the promotion just wasn't coming through. Every time there was a meeting to um, decide on the promotions, my promotion didn't come through. My supervisor at the time kept saying to me, yeah, 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 we're going to, we're going to promote you, we're going to promote you. Um, and it just didn't happen. And each time I asked him why it hadn't happened and what the problem was, he would come up with weak excuses like, oh, it was too busy, or there were too many candidates, or whatever the case may be. But you're definitely going to be promoted. You're on the list. It will happen next time. And the next time would come around and it wouldn't happen. So there was this disconnect where I wasn't getting proper feedback on what the problem was and why I wasn't being promoted. So there wasn't something that I could specifically work on to help me improve my performance. And the other thing, of course, was that I started losing my faith and my trust in the supervisor that I was working for and in the organization that I was working for as well. So I had a massive disconnect because I wasn't being promoted as quickly as I was expecting to be promoted. And this meant that I wasn't keeping up with my peers who were doing better than me. And it meant that my chances of getting to the boardroom within a reasonable period of time within my career, I didn't think was going to happen. So I needed to make a change, but I didn't know what change to make. At the time, I had an opportunity to go on a long holiday, so I took a sabbatical. And this sabbatical was very good for me because it gave me an opportunity to understand what was important to me and what I wanted to do. So when I got back to the organization, I started networking with people in the organization and other departments and finding out more about what they were doing. I realized that the earlier on you can get involved in a project, the greater your strategic impact is going to be on the decision making in that project. The further along the project it goes, the more the decisions get locked in and then you start making optimizations on cost. And ultimately when the project is implemented, what you then do is you make the, the process run more efficiently but your biggest impact really happens right up front in the beginning when the first decision is being made, when that strategic direction has been set. And so this is the reason that I was attracted to the new business development group who were working on new ideas. I asked whether it would be possible to do a secondment with them. And at the time, they were quite keen on the idea of having some type of rotation through the organization and enabling people to try um, different things and spending a bit of time there. So I was given I think it was three or four months of secondment time to, uh, to work in that department. And the understanding was that when that period of time came to an end, I would go back to the previous group that I was working in. Or 
if I managed to make enough of an impression and there was an opportunity to join them on a full-time basis, maybe things would change. And this is what happened in the end. But I'll tell you more about that later. The important thing about changing within an organization is to get this right, you need to be clear on what it is that you're trying to achieve and why you want to make the change. And you also need to do the right networking to find out where the opportunities are and to make sure that you can either open doors for yourself or find doors that might be open. And of course, the environment that you're leaving is going to have to be willing to let you go. So you need to think about how you can make sure that you've dispensed all of your responsibilities in that environment so that they're not relying on you to do something. Um, this is why the timing was good for me when I got back from my sabbatical. I had already released myself from all my duties and it was easy for me to move over to another group. So these are tactics on how to make a change within uh, an organization.